Okay, um, welcome to the uh, second module of the Kinematics and Dynamics of Machinery course. Uh, in this module, there are going to be two parts. Uh, we are going to look at, as you can see in the title, Kinematic Synthesis of uh, Four Bar Mechanisms. Part one, of course, I have another set of slides. Part two, where we look at a few other things as part of the four bar mechanisms. The uh, primary, uh, I'll first, I mean, we'll spend some time motivating the need for uh, uh, this, uh, you know, why, why uh, we are going to study this. And um, in the first part, we are going to basically design crank rocker mechanisms. Uh, there are various approaches to do this. I will discuss uh, specifically. Uh, two approaches here. Now, uh, in this part of the course, uh, we are going to essentially stick to mostly graphical methods, especially for uh, the four bar uh, mechanism case, we are going to uh, stick with the graphical methods. When we go to CAM, we'll do graphical as well as analytical uh, approaches to that uh, thing. The reason uh, being that the analytical approach for the four bar synthesis is quite involved and complicated. Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> you would have basically analyzed a number of lower power mechanisms and uh, I've seen from the discussions a number of questions that you had uh, to, to carry out these analysis. Uh, typically, you have been given either 4 bar or 6 bar mechanisms. We have not taxed you by giving an 8 bar mechanism. Um, so mostly we have been sticking with 4 or 6 bar mechanisms. Uh, and they primarily uh, use revolute or prismatic lower pair uh, joints or, or, or lower pairs as they are called. Now you were given all the link dimensions and uh, for a given configuration, you found out, for example, velocities and accelerations. Um, usually for the output link, because that is what we are typically interested in input output relationship. How does the motion transfer happen in that particular case? But we also, uh, sometimes uh, just to create an exam problem, for instance, uh, we are looking at what happens to the intermediate link. You also did position analysis, uh, configuration analysis. So that was also something that uh, you did. But these are all um, things that you did where we gave you a mechanism. Now, uh, you cannot carry out this kind of analysis unless you have actually designed the mechanism. So by design here, uh, in the context of kinematics, we are simply going to look at uh, making a mechanism which will serve a certain input-output relationship in terms of the kinematics. So that is what uh, we are interested in, although design by itself is much more broader. As you will see as you go along in the course, uh, the four-year course, you will actually get into strength design. Uh, uh, you will you will look at uh, ergonomics, uh, you know, so, so many other things as, as uh, you design a product. Anyway, so you have to design, then of course you have to fabricate and then assemble the mechanism to check whether it is working or not. Here we are going to simply look at the design stage of it or, uh, you know, conceptually come up with uh, a sizing of the mechanism. All right. What are the class of problems that we are going to look at? Um, there are three uh, basic uh, designs we are going to look at uh, or design uh, ideas that we are going to look at for mechanisms uh, and the first one that we are going to look at is something that you have done a fair amount of analysis uh, in this course. Uh, here is basically a wiper. So I'm going to uh, click on this. So we, uh, I, I basically, this is a picture. I will click on this. Hopefully it should open. Yes, it does open Windows Media Player here. Uh, let me, yeah. So you can see at the corner here. The red link basically is uh, your, um, as you can see, the red link is basically the crank with, driven by a small motor. And um, the green part is basically the coupler. And uh, of course, uh, you have uh, the rocker, uh, which is basically going swinging back and forth. Now, if you focus only on the first four, if you forget about the long uh, coupler and uh, the another rocker that is there, which we call as a diode, essentially what we have is um, a, a crank rocker mechanism if you focus only on the first loop of it. The second loop basically had another coupler and uh, an output. And if you noticed, it was a parallelogram mechanism. In case you didn't notice, let me just replay.
So you have two loops here. It's a six link mechanism. And the, the second loop basically is a parallelogram uh, mechanism, both being rockers. And the first loop is a Grashoff crank rocker mechanism. Okay, um, let me stop that. All these are available in Dropbox. You can play as many times as you want to your heart's content and then look at this. Uh, the source for this is mentioned here at the bottom. I picked this from YouTube. Um, so typically, uh, we'll have to, you know, if, if uh, I have to design this mechanism, I have to write down the design requirements or specifications, right? So you saw that uh, there were actually two wipers which were moving in sync. Um, we will not worry about uh, once we design the first crank rocker, the second one, uh, we know how to design that, right? So uh, if you ask someone um, how to, what, what should the uh, wiper do, uh, the answer would be that, okay, clean as much area as possible, right? But since you are using a rocker, we have to translate that in terms of angles. So what is the arc that it is got to sweep? Maybe it's about 65 to 75 degrees, which it to, the two together would cover something like, uh, uh, you know, 130 to 150 degrees. The wiper blade uh, length is usually dictated by the size of the windshield, as you, you know, quickly will, will realize. Um, and I'm, I'm just giving you a typical dimension, which is between 40 to 75 centimeters. Uh, this is typical. It could be longer than that for a larger vehicle. So the question uh, that we are going to try to pose and answer uh, in this uh, module is, how do you design a crank rocker mechanism where someone says, well, uh, the rocker extreme positions uh, should be 70 degrees apart. So that means from one extreme position to the other extreme position, the rocker swings by 70 degrees. Um, and of course, an additional uh, design requirement may be say, please limit your rocker length to basically 50 to 60 centimeters. So both of these are going to be design requirements that are going to be placed. And we'll see how we are going to, um, you know, go about doing this uh, in, in the later parts of uh, in the other lectures as that will follow. All right. Uh, the other class of design problem that we are going to look at is, look, I may like to guide a point on a body to trace a particular path. For example, I may want uh, um, the uh, mechanism such that a point on uh, uh, on that uh, uh, on a body to which this mechanism is part of has to move in a straight line over a, a certain uh, a distance, let us say. So I will quickly show you an interesting video from Disney. Uh, this is, you know, interesting because they, how they make their animation characters, uh, some of the animations. So let me click on this again. Uh, again, click open. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this is a short video, 18 seconds. What I will show you is the second part you focus on where it is more clear. I will uh, tell you what I'm looking at. You see that uh, focus on the front leg, uh, front foot. So you can see now it is tracing basically here. Uh, as you can see, it's moving along a straight line, right? So let me play again. Now I will not talk. You will just see the second half of the video. Moving along a straight line. Moving along a straight line. Okay. So... <clears throat> So we go back again. I pulled this out from uh, YouTube. I have uh, given where you can find this. So uh, the design question then one poses is uh, how do you design a mechanism? And we are going to limit ourselves to a four hour mechanism uh, over here so that a point on a link moves along a particular path. Now you saw that it, it was moving basically along a straight line. Now you'll notice that in a four hour mechanism, there are limitations. Uh, the input and the output typically are going to be rotating. Uh, it could be a full rotation or a partial rotation, depending on whether it is a crank or a rocker. But nevertheless, the points on those, uh, all the points on uh, that link will essentially trace parts of a circle. So they are basically going to move around a, a circular arc. So which uh, would essentially tell you that if I want to uh, get a, a, a path to be traced, which is a straight line, Either I have to look at a very, very large link such that the arc looks like a straight line or better yet, uh, use the coupler 
which has a much more complicated uh, motions possible because remember the coupler is has a combination of translation as well as rotation. Therefore, uh, getting a, 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 a kind of a straight line path using a coupler uh, is, is much more easier to do than using the input or the output link, obviously the output link, sorry, other than the input link. Okay, this is one class of problems that we are going to look at. Uh, the third class is uh, instead of a point uh, moving along a path, we will look at basically a body which has to be guided through certain positions. And I am going to show you uh, a video of my car boot. Um, so let's let's go look at the video. Let me click on that. So you can see this is my car boot in the open position. It's being closed by me. You could actually see the mechanism that was also there. Let me play that again. The, the mechanism that is there uh, is also visible. So you see the mechanism there. In fact, um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, this uh, slider which is there, which is a piston. That actually is a redundant uh, thing more to give it uh, stability. Uh, that is not required to, to basically do the thing. So you can see the, the open position, closed position, and I could take any intermediate positions and then say what should be the, uh, this mechanism has already been designed by the Tata, uh, Tata Motors engineers. So we are going to find out whether we have the capability to come up with these link dimensions that you see there, whether I will be able to come close to this by, uh, you know, uh, designing this for uh, the various uh, the, the boot lid going through various positions so that's something that we are going to look at so we are going to try to mimic uh, what the tata motors guys so i should be able to size this uh, as a as a problem so um we have to design a mechanism again we are going to see that the body is going to be part of the coupler uh, going from open to close position and normally we will select only a few intermediate positions to carry out uh, this design okay uh, so by they, they, they typically you could use two positions open and close but that gives us a, a very crude mechanism you could add uh, a one more intermediate position then it is called a three precision point design uh, you could go to four uh, positions uh, but uh, in a graphical method we are going to stick to three positions because for four positions uh, the graphical method is not very useful uh, we'll have to switch to analytical methods to basically do uh, this exercise all right so uh, in this part of the module i have now motivated that we are going to do three class of uh, synthesis problems first we are going to synthesize a crank rocker mechanism the second is that we are going to look at uh, how to guide a point on a coupler through a particular path, chosen path. Uh, again, we'll do uh, precision point design. That means the path is not uh, having infinite points. The path will basically be dictated by two or three, uh, three or four uh, points. Again, from a graphical method, we'll stick to three points. And then we are going to guide a rigid body. So the uh, second design is basically called as path generation. And the sec the last one that I showed you, the boot uh, lid opening and closing, that is called as either rigid body guidance or motion generation. So the three class of uh, design problems, we are going to synthesize a crank rocker, we are going to synthesize a mechanism for path generation, and we are going to synthesize a mechanism for motion generation. Okay, so with this, I will uh, stop. It's a rather uh, short introduction, but uh, good enough to, to get you motivated. And then uh, fr from the next video onwards, we will start uh, looking at the crank rocker design.